Hey guys, this is Chewy over at Team Prop Monkeys. What I am going to be showing you today is uh, all the parts that I'm going to use to build a cheap race quad, uh, but yet it's still pretty fast. Uh, or I hope it will be. We'll see how it turns out. I've never tried this combination before. Uh, so first off, I'm going to talk about the frame. So the frame is from Banggood, and I will provide all of the links to all the parts that I discuss here today at the bottom, and then with the prices that, or at least at the time when I bought them. Uh, so this is from Banggood. I don't remember the name of this frame, but you, if, if you're into a race quads, you may recognize it. It's uh, very similar to the uh, Luminaire QAV210 Charpoo version. Uh, so that's why I call this my Charpoo knockoff. And um, that's the one, the one by Luminaire is I believe $120 and this one's $25. So already that's a great savings. Now, will this be any better? I'm not sure. I mean, this is carbon fiber, pure carbon fiber. Um, you know, it's, it's stiff. It's three millimeter thick. Uh, it is stiff or stiff. You know, pretty stiff. I can bend it a little bit. I'm not sure if the actual luminaire is, is stiffer, uh, but that's what I'm going to use since we are going to try to build a, an expensive um, quad. Uh, the motors that I plan to use is oh, and before I move on, this does have two types of ways to mount your cameras. One is to mount them with these two plates where you can put them in here. On either side and then and then you put your camera right in the middle the camera would have a special case uh, and then you can uh, move it up and down and the, and then you would screw the, the these holes where is where you would be able to screw the camera in place uh, that special case would have these holes to, uh, to screw in the uh, camera in fact I do have an example which is why I brought this one out in, in view is this is my space one quad uh, but this has the same concept as you can see this has a plate on this side and on the other side and then you have the The uh, camera right in the middle as you can see there So if you see that casing I'll also put a link at the bottom I don't have a spare one of these so I won't be using this uh, on my build I'll use the other option of, of mounting the uh, the uh, the camera so so this is one way But there is one issue with this um, the issue or with with this charpoo build is you can notice that these holes are actually bigger than the one the one from space one um, And you and I show you it's an issue because the one in the middle here Here's a screw that actually comes with that camera and it goes right through So what I'm gonna have to do is I'll probably have to uh, Find another screw that has a bigger head or maybe put a washer or something to make it fit in the middle it Probably will work on the on the on the outer uh, holes because it does uh, actually go in here, and uh, if we can make it go, and it does fit well. The hole is just small enough where it doesn't pop right through, um, so that might work. But it's I find that that may, may it might not work. Well, it will work, but there's a couple issues. One is one it'll be if you put in the 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 further front hole, the camera's gonna be sticking out way by a lot and that's going to be very vulnerable to crashes uh, and of course we all crash and and you're going to break the lens or the camera or more so that won't work and then there's the one in the back there are the, this there is this cutout right here that is to clear the camera so when you angle it up um, as you can see here so you angle it up it'll that way you can clear it but putting it back here, I think it's going to be too far. Now, I I'll, might try, if I, if I have a spare spare, spare case camera like that one, uh, I will probably give it a shot, and I will put it in the description uh, of my findings. Now, the other option is with this guy. So there is a cutout hole right here, and there is a cutout hole right here and there's two notches right here and here so that one notch goes into one of the cutout holes and angles back Oops. and then it goes the other uh, notch goes to the other cutout hole and it is a fixed angle so you can't adjust it that's that is a downfall uh, for me luckily this is very close to the angle I want it anyway 
Uh, so that might be okay. Uh, but I know for those really extreme racers, uh, <laughs> they have almost 90 degrees up, so it's, it's, they need more. So, so that's something to consider. And that's why we, using these plates would be uh, much better. It'll, it'll give you the variable angles that you want. So next we'll discuss the motor. So I chose uh, the Sunny Sky X2204S, 2300 KVs. And I got this from HiFPV, HIFPV.com. Uh, and the reason is because it is $9.99. Well, it, is, it was at the time I bought it. I don't know if it will be now, but $9.99 for these 2204s. Originally retail, it is $17, I believe. So this is uh, pretty good. Uh, this is a Chinese, Banggood obviously is a, is a company from China, so you wanna order early, it'll take a while to arrive. Same thing with high FPV. Uh, there was no shipping charges, uh, free shipping, but it does take a while. There is one thing I wanna talk about. So they don't come with screws. Uh, these are my screws that I put on. Uh, I'm using the M3 by six. Now I recommend getting M3 by five because six it seems like it gets really close to the 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 carbon the uh, the copper coils in there. So I would do a little bit shorter just so you don't accidentally um, pierce one of those coils. And then as well, uh, something to to look out for is you know these wires that goes out to the ESCs. Well, the wires that goes straight in, I've noticed that sometimes some of them actually two of the four motors that I got, uh, they actually go so wide that they actually go right under the screw, the, one, uh, the screw uh, holes here. So it's one right here and then one right there. So be real careful, you kind of investigate to see if, if you can see the wires going that wide. If so, uh, what I did was I used a little screwdriver to kind of gently move it out of the way as much as possible so I don't actually pierce it when I s screw it in, screw um, the motor in. Okay. Um, the ESCs I got from Ready to Fly Quads and this was $13. Um, I use ESCs on that space one that you see right there. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it because uh, you know I heard a lot about little bees and uh, that you know they're, they're the closest thing to uh, these kiss KISS -S. Um, and uh, so I you know I decided to get them and you know I, I actually kind of like them I like them a lot so I got them from ready to fly quads $13 uh, shipping is flat rate so you can buy as many things and it's about 450 I believe shipping only so pretty inexpensive um, and they are uh, U.S. from Florida, so uh, they will get to you pretty quick. So I actually bought five of these, one f as a spare. Um, so let's see, the flight controller, this is also from Ready to Fly Quad. Uh, this is the Flip 32. So this is actually a NASA 32 knockoff. It's exactly a NASA 32. Um, and uh, it, you know, it's, uh, it does clean flight. I use beta flight. It is, this is the acro, ver acro version, if you will, or it doesn't have the, uh, the barometer or compass uh, on here. So, um, uh, and it's very inexpensive, it's only $18. So I would purchase everything together because it's, like I said, it's flat rate shipping from uh, Ready to Fly Quad. So buy your ESCs, buy your, your flight controller, buy anything else that you need. They have props, uh, the prices are pretty reasonable. So, um, and they have a lot of different accessories to put in like lights and things of that nature. So, and you buy a lot and the and shipping's gonna be pretty cheap. Uh, for the distribution board, now I could have gone cheaper, but I decided to get this one. This one's for Multimotor Romania. Uh, it's $14 uh, and um, now, it's, uh, I got this because one, I needed a five volt um, back, BEC. And that's on this, so just three three slots, uh, so you can connect three things to it. So that that has uh, here it has that feature. The other side has also a, a back, but it's a volt a variable voltage regulator. So variable meaning you can adjust it to whatever um, voltage you want. And there's three slots again. Uh, and if you look at here, there is that screwdriver right there. 
and that you can turn a left or right and it will raise and lower the voltage I plan to set it at 12 volts so that way I can feed it to my FPV system uh, to my camera and then to my uh, video transmitter VTX because uh, they do accept 12 volts uh, and then of course here are here's the uh, the pads for for connecting the ESC's to give it power uh, like a normal distribution board and then uh, the actual battery comes in over here and then this is just an extra one here that you can use for anything else so there is a, 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 a another feature here that I'm not going to use if you see here this has uh, voltage and current sensors and it uses a APM uh, compatible type connector here and uh, so if you you know have a flight controller or OSD that can uh, accept those connections you can plug it in there so you can get the, the data into that um, which is great I'm not going to use it um, I may in someday in the future I'm also not going to use an OSD uh, I typically use minimum OSDs but I've had a lot of bad bad luck with when I crash those OSD goes bad so I've learned how to fly without it because I really like those uh, that horizon bar that comes like kind of like a fighter pilot uh, it usually helps me fly better but uh, oh you know the the OSDs is uh, I've I've broken eight of them so they they're much more trouble than they are worth so I don't use OSDs now and I've relearned how to fly without them um, I am going to use a free I am I use free squad free sky transmit transmitter uh, or FR sky or frisky it, it, everyone pronounces it differently but uh, I'm going to use the X4R and main reason is one the footprint is small and two uh, it uh, supports PPM M all, most X, uh, free, uh, free Skies uh, receivers are S bus compatible only not CPPM the problem with that is most flight controllers only uh, is uh, supports CPPM so since I want CPPM I got this guy and that way you kind of lessen the amount of wires that you have in your quad and makes it look cleaner uh, and you don't have to use, worry about using some kind of uh, CPPM to S bus converter or anything like that VTX I plan to use this guy I've I have it's a, a 5.8 gigahertz 200 milliwatt 32 channel I got this from oh by the way uh, I got this guy from Aloft Hobbies so a lot of hobbies is uh, I've, I've purchased a few things it's very inexpensive this is all right currently at $21 uh, their shipping is only a couple dollars and they ship out of California um, they don't have a lot of products but the, the stuff that they do have is the pricing is very competitive to the Chinese brand uh, companies so go out check out a lot of hobbies again I have the links at the bottom back to the VTX so um, this one I actually have this on many quads I've never had a problem with it uh, I know I have you know I know a lot of people that use the brand names that's you know 30 40 50 60 dollar VTX I'm sure they work fantastic I honestly I think this works great too so eleven dollars from Banggood can't beat the price and you know the whole point of this is an inexpensive build so this does the job and then the antenna is here so I plan to use a clover leaf this is a left hand but you can get a right hand uh, make sure you get the RP SMA um, because uh, that's what the VTX that I got uses um, and I got this on eBay I got a pair for I believe it was eight dollars so one each four dollars can't beat that price I am going to use a an, a, an adapter uh, and the reason why I, I, I'm gonna I need an adapter because I plan to put and here's the top of the plate I plan to put the VTX right here and the whole reason is because there's these cutouts that you see right here right here right here right here where you can place your VTX and then zip tie it onto it you can see that you can zip tie around the actual antenna and then zip tie again around the body at the back and that's fantastic so that means you'll need one of these guys adapters to have it come in through the hole and then you could put your antenna on top and that would make it nice and neat and you know and, and efficient 
And not only that, guess what? You have access to your your dip switches um, for your channels right there. So you still have really good access to it. So I really like that. Uh, it was pretty nice. Uh, it was uh, well thought out there. Um, for the ESC, so I plan to put the distribution board right here obviously but then I plan to stack the the flight controller above that okay now you got to be careful because um, uh, the pins this is there's not much height and so although this is still short you're gonna put your servos unless you're gonna directly solder the wires into the holes uh, unlike me I'm actually gonna put pins and then the three pin servos so if it barely fits if you make them go straight up um, the the connectors uh, I actually have that set up in the space one that you see back there and it barely clears the top plate so in this build I'm going to make it uh, do an angle pins and have it go over the board and that way the servo is out of the way and you have a lot of room above because you still need to put the strap underneath which uh, will hit the servo which is the same issue I have with the space one um, also with the ESCs, I am going to, I'll take this off for a little while, strap them right here. So you can see there's a, there's a, uh, there's this, these uh, cutouts on here. So I'm going to use those cutouts uh, to strap the ESCs from here. So I'm going to put one here and then one next to it for the back. And then again at the front, uh, I'm going to put it right here and then right here so that would be nice and then that way when I put the motors say I put the motors right here oops this is the wrong way um, I can go ahead and just cut these wires down I plan to cut the wires down from the ESC side and then just solder them right onto the motors and that'd be nice and clean and then also with the distribution board since you're putting the ECs right here, look at the wires are right there. So you can cut them down really short and save a lot of space and weight. And then just go ahead and solder directly onto the pads. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and do another video on the actual build. Uh, keep an eye out for it. And I hope you guys go out and see it and hope you like it. All right, thanks.